This is my kvetch uh, corner, uh, I where I complain. Kvetch is a Yiddish word for complaining. And uh, Yiddish is the best language to complain in, but I don't speak enough lang uh, Yiddish, unfortunately. Uh, yet. So, every time you watch a YouTube in Israel, there's always a film where a child is weeping, Mommy! Ima, אני לא רוצה למות! Ima, אני לא רוצה למות! אני לא רוצה להיות חולה! And it's like, I'm sorry you have cancer. I'm sorry you have some debilitating disease. But please, please don't make my life more miserable with your sad commercials on YouTube. So Israel, can you remove the sick children and the abuse of children? This is abusive behavior. Why do we have to see children, cancer ill children on YouTube or whatever? And then you have the Russian mothers speaking in Russian. It's okay, you know, like, you know, in Russian, half in Russian, half in Hebrew, talking about a sick child. Why? Why? You know, of course, it's a good way to get donations. I'm sorry to say it, but it's manipulative behavior. מספיק לעשות לאנשים סחיטה רגשית יוטיוב עם כל הפרסומות על ילדים חולים. די, מספיק. לא רוצים לראות ילדים חולים. זה גם ניצול של ילדים חולים. אז אני, אני שמה את היוטיוב הזה. מספיק לנצל ילדים. רוצים לאסוף כספים לילדים חולים? סבבה. אל תראו ילדים חולים. זה לא יפה. זה עושה לי שאני לא יכולה לישון בלילה. וסיוטים. יש אנשים שהם רגישים. אני גם רוצה שאנשי החתולים יפסיקו להציף אותי בסרטונים על חיות מי שהתעללים בהם. I also think the animal rights people should not be posting videos or information about abused animals. It's difficult. You should put a warning. Are you sensitive? Yes, I am. Do I have to watch this? No, I don't. Give me the option of not watching abused animals and children or sick children or sick animals on commercials or posts on Facebook. I don't care what. I'm sorry, but some of us are sensitive and they don't want to see sick children with cancer and they don't want to see animal suffering. So please, that's first of all. Getting another matter off my chest. This whole obsession, the one person makes a video and then it's like a wildfire, it spreads. So it goes with Megan and Harry. How much can you talk about them? Yes, they're exploding people. It's called capitalism. Yes, they take advantage of the royal family. But you know what? The royal family should have been gone a long time ago. No taxpayer should sponsor people that get money just because they were born. Birthright should be part of the Middle Ages. In 2020, you shouldn't pay for somebody because they're a prince or a queen or God knows what. Especially the Windsor, who are like a mixture of God knows what kind of bloodlines and yes there were wealthy landowners but this is not the feudalist feudalistic feudalism system of the middle ages where the kings got taxes from the poor people so stop sponsoring them and then you don't have to bitch about Meghan and Harry anymore so that's one thing so that's number two number three on my list is the transgenders you transgenders who get offended because we call you, oh, you're not really a man. I don't mind if you are born a man and you think you're a woman, or you're born a woman and you think you're a man. I have a lot of testosterone, I think, because I have a deep voice, and I do have a lot of sort of masculine energy, I believe, whatever it's called. I don't know what I have. I haven't had, I have never gotten tested, but what I can say is, Every time I remove chin hairs, I think about these women who take testosterone in order to have more chin hair, in order to have beards, and in order to do all these horrible operations. And I just saw a video that really will take a long time to forget. This character called Jazz, who has been transgender since an early age, who was supported by its family to take hormones and stop it from developing normal puberty because it thinks it's a girl standing by the side of a person called Noel a boy 
who has decided to remove his genitalia and mommy and papi are standing by and supporting him and he says i love you with a deep voice and like this masculine face so i mean where does it end plastic surgery to change your face to make it look feminine feminine surgery to make your voice chords like at the end of the day if you look like a man and you're born a woman or if you look like a woman and you're born a ma- wait i'm getting confused even talking about it if you're born a man and you look like a woman or if you're born a woman and you look like a man looking like the other gender is deception why can't you just live out what you feel like and you know remove your hair, facial hair or grow your facial hair and just don't have operations and you know what i hate to say it but it's all a matter of money if you didn't have the money to undergo these operations you wouldn't undergo these operations so don't say it's a necessity because when i go shopping so when i go shopping in the supermarket there's the essential things i need like vegetables fruit protein and then there's the chocolate or junk food or whatever and that's luxury right first you buy first you get essential essential products for for me to live are foods i need my body needs in order to survive the rest i don't the same thing with these operations you're not going to die if you're not going to have you move remove your genitalia or your breasts so stop making it sound like that and what i don't like is the support system it's not like being gay it's not at all like being gay because when you're being gay when you you're gay and you prefer another gender when you're attracted to somebody else you're not harming yourself you're not harming somebody else's you know you're both consenting adults and you're in, you know lots of them are in loving relationships like heterosexual some of them are in, loving relationships some of them are just there for the sex exactly like heterosexuals what harm are you doing nothing so why is it lgbtq why are you together why is everybody together that's what i don't get why are you a community even i mean if you prefer your own gender and you're only like what are you one in 10 people so 10% of the population why are you a community at all you're so diverse politically there are people on the left there are people on the right especially in israel So why are you together with the all the other letters? What do you have in common with somebody who likes both genders? I you know, nothing. You don't like both genders. What do you have in common with somebody who undergoes operations to appear like the other gender? Nothing, because you don't have a problem with your your identity as a man or woman. So that's not your issue. So why are you a community even? So if you want to have community, why don't you just include all the weird people because as as a person who's a little bit like um an oddity a space oddity i would call myself i don't have a community of weird people there's not lgbtqw so why is everybody that's a little bit different uh has a little letter initial why is it now initial for weird people or for people that are non conformist So I suggest you change it to LGBTQWN non-conformists because we don't have a community because I wanted to join a choir of the LGBT center where I volunteer on holidays and he the man said the choir master said first he said my voice wasn't good enough because I couldn't copy the notes like they're looking for somebody who can like if he says ha 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 I have to be able to say ha 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 so if i'm not a parrot i cannot be part of the choir i don't understand it i wish somebody who understands music can explain and then he says and you know it's only for the lgbt q community so first of all I, what what am i supposed to do wear a t-shirt am i supposed to to like do people do blood checks on this do do they test your blood type if you're lgbtq I mean this is absurd when you form your own community on sexual preference and sexual identity that is different than mainstream. It's absurd. Why are heterosexual people who don't have like other sexual differences than bears that don't have the same, sorry? 
why can they not become part of the community if they are weird and odd and don't feel happy with the mainstream society? Why isn't there a place for non-conformists? Why do we not have a community for non-conformists? We have a lot of problems, non-conformists. We are not liked by mainstream, especially in Israel. We are not homeless people. We're not refugees. We're just different because we have different opinions and we go against the waves, against the stream. But we do not have a community. Sorry about this. This is part of Israel too. So, but contrary to US, there's no police harassing this man because of the color of his skin. So, one zero to Israel. You know, I've seen that a lot actually. Because when I was living in Europe, this guy would have been harassed. There would be two policemen with guns asking for his ID. And as far as I know, this is not happening here, maybe in other parts. I've heard there is a certain amount of racism, but nothing to compare to the US. And of course, I have to go back to Meghan and Harry. She says that UK is so racist. I'm just reading Gone with the Wind. And it's difficult. I've, I've, I've finished the first chapter. It's difficult to read how they treated African people. And when Meghan Markle actually goes to the U.S. to escape racism, it's a joke. It's a sick joke. You're not going to U.S. to escape racism because you have never identified as African until it was good for you because it meant that it made Harry look so tolerant of racists or whatever they are. I don't even believe they are racist. It's just melanin. It's just the color of your skin, for God's sakes. Get over it, people. Racism is dumb. But it's no joke. The history of racism in the U.S. is no joke. And when you read Gone with the Wind, it's just heartbreaking. And it's not the worst book that depicts the, the South and the slave owning slaves and being wealthy and rich and having people work for you as slaves. And then excusing it because in the Bible they used to own slaves or I don't know whatever shitty excuse they had in the South. But I remember attending school in the U.S. and learning about the Civil War and just being horrified. Being horrified by the racism that plagued the U.S. And it's still going on with Donald Trump with his approval. And so how the hell does Meghan Markle excuse going to the U.S.? who is the world leader in racism against African people escaping racism in the UK. It's absurd because the UK stopped owning slaves decades before the US and never got to the level that it got to in the South. There was never a civil war in the England because slave owners wouldn't release their slaves. I had a very interesting lesson in history when I was in the Caribbean. Um, about how they used to, re I was in this island of where the release, the freed slaves went to. And it was really interesting to hear that history. And I was so happy for them. I could just feel what it's like to be a slave and to be liberated because I am a little bit of a slave of society, I feel. And every time I'm liberated from the, from the, the hold of society on me, whether it's a shitty job where they don't appreciate me, whether it's a place that doesn't accept me because I'm a little bit different, uh, and I don't have a community to fight for my rights because I'm not LGBTQ. I'm just W or N, non-conformist. And I have white skin, so I'm in no group. And the majority here is Jewish, so I can't say, oh, I'm being, a, you know, I'm being discriminated because I'm a Jew. I'm just different than the mainstream. And I think differently than the mainstream, but I don't have a community that supports me. Oh, of course, I'm talking about me again, like me again. But the point is that it's absurd how many channels there are in Meghan and Harry. Yes, they're con artists, but just don't pay them. Don't pay them and shut up. Don't pay taxes that go to pay the royal family. Not only Meghan and Harry, but none of them. None of these clowns. I'm so sick of seeing Prince William and Kate in a bagel shop and how she's like with her, this beautiful ring that she got from Diana, Princess Diana. Uh, and it's, you know, for, that belonged to Princess Diana, this huge ring, and she's like, she's like, um, what is the word? She's like uh, working the dough and making bagels 
And it's exactly, she's going to be there for exactly five minutes. So don't say that Megan and Harry are different. They're all there for the five or ten minutes. She didn't do this the whole day. And why the hell is she so thin if she's pregnant? I haven't been this thin since I was 12 years old. Why the hell does she, why doesn't she eat? I, I'm wondering if she has an eating disorder. Yes, I think you should. You guys should wonder. How can somebody be so thin and have three kids? It's not like she's working from morning till night. Is she in the gym for 12 hours a day? I don't know what. But that's not how a pregnant woman should look like. Looks very unhealthy. She's a beautiful woman, but what the hell is this act? I'm making bagels in a bagel shop. Or I'm, you know, uh, she didn't have gloves on, by the way. It's nice that she had the mask on, but she didn't have gloves on. And she had that ring on. I mean, surely you don't make bagels with a ruby, what is it? Kind of an emerald ring on it, or forgot, sapphire ring. Yeah, it was sapphire. So that's one issue. Um, sounds associated, but I'm trying to make it like um, organized, sort of structured. So. This is my criticism of YouTube, how there's one topic and everybody's onto it. There's Megan and Harry is like all these people running channels speaking about them. And isn't it unhealthy to talk about other people? Isn't it like bad-mouthing other people not healthy? So British people who are bad-mouthing Megan and Harry don't pay taxes. They go to the royal family. That's it. And shut up. Americans who bad mouth Megan and Harry, it's none of your business. We had the Boston Tea Party and capitalism. <laughs> Where's the police? Nobody knows. This, these uh, motorcycles are breaking a new world record in speeding. Um, so, Americans who bad mouth Megan and Harry, if you're jealous because they're making deals with Netflix or whatever, do it yourself. You know, this is a sentence I got from my ex. If you think you can do it better, do it. Don't be jealous of people. Just do it. Capitalism means accumulating as much money as you can. Are they the only scum? Scum? No, what, what is the word? Are they the only con artists in America? They're the only people making money doing nothing? No, they're not. Actually, most of the wealthy people do nothing. Actually, making money in capitalistic society is in opposite proportion to how much you work. The wealthy people don't do shit. The people that work hard don't get a lot of money. That's capitalism for you. You don't like it. Do a revolution. Become communist. But don't bitch about Harry and Meghan constantly doing the same thing that every person in America who makes money does. So that's my little, my little uh, nutshell summary of what's wrong with YouTube. Especially in Israel, those commercials about sick children have driven me up the wall. I don't want to see... Crying children, every time I watch a YouTube video, stop using children that have cancer to ask for donations, then I don't know where they go to. You know what? All these charities, I don't know where they go to. And as for cancer, try to prevent it by not smoking, by living a healthy lifestyle, not eating meat, becoming a vegetarian, so you don't eat all those toxins that go into the poor animals that are being tortured in farms. So we're in the ocean, it's beautiful, talking about toxin. Soon I will be meeting toxin in the water. The ocean here is not very clean because we have all this sewage flowing here. And, but it's beautiful and it's almost the new Jewish year. Do I believe that the world was created 5,000 years ago? I do not. 5,000, I forgot, 700 blah, blah, blah years ago, I do not. Do I believe that God has a little book where he writes me, like, oh, she's been very good, like Santa Claus. Isn't it like Santa Claus? If I've been good, then I get written in the book of life. And if I'm not good, I'm going to die. So all the good people get to live and all the bad people die. If that was the case, life would be completely different, but it's not. It's so beautiful here. Why am I bitching when it's so beautiful here? So I'm going to do my yoga practice. And I'm going to go dip in the ocean. And all the people that are jealous of me can just stuff themselves. Because I feel it. There's so much jealousy here. If you're wearing flip-flops and going to the beach, I see the glares of the people that are in the shops right now and having to work. It's not my fault they closed the schools and kindergartens. Sorry. Sorry I haven't 
sorry I had time off today. I also didn't get paid though. People here are extremely jealous. If you say you lived in Europe or you lived in the States, they're so jealous of everything. Don't be jealous of other people because you don't know what other people have gone through. And being jealous of other people is really stupid. And that comes back to all those channels bad-mouthing people on YouTube. I did it myself, I realized it, but I've since come to my senses. So this is the religious beach. Not a lot of women out there. Most of them are cleaning and cooking for the holiday. And I cannot imagine a worse fate than being a religious, orthodox Jewish woman. They have to go through so much shit and then they're told, but you're a queen, you're a queen. Everybody respects you. If you respect a woman, you don't ask her to cover her hair because it gives you, it makes men lust after her. If you respect women, you don't ask them to wear long skirts. If you respect women, you don't ask them to dip in a stinky pool and being examined by a woman to see if she's clean enough for a man to have sex with her. If you respect women, you don't demand on them from them to be virgins where men can do whatever they want. If you respect women, you don't expect them to have a baby every year. And if you respect women, you don't expect them to be anything. Just because you're born a woman or a man doesn't mean that you have to do a certain role. And in Judaism, it is like that. A man can lead a prayer, can wear a yarmulke, can say the prayer, but women don't count for a minyan. And that kills me. And I don't care which rabbi, there's nobody who can explain that, why women do not count for prayer. And that's why I do not like this religion. I have some things I like, like a filter fish. I do like knedelach. I like the food, I like the songs, I like the spirit, I am a Jew, but I don't like the discrimination against women in, in all religions, less so in Christianity, less so in Buddhism, but still in Christianity it does exist as well. This idea that women are not pure, that there is some sin, this sin of Garden of Eden that women have sinned. We haven't sinned. We didn't give him the stupid apple. He was just dumb because he was just not smart. And women are not a rib. Women are a whole. And in fact, biology tells us that the female is the stronger one. Whether And a baby that doesn't have uh, testosterone develops into a female. Females are the dominant. They're the stronger sex. If you look at babies being born, they're, they're healthier. Baby girls are healthier than the males on the average. So why, why do we have this stupid story about women being a rib? I'm not a rib. I'm not a part of a man and I'm not a half. This is what the Orthodox tell you, that you're a half, that you don't matter, you don't count. You do count women and you don't have to cover yourselves. I would cover myself though because there are a lot of outsing. There's a lot of, in the Middle East, there are a lot of men that really cannot control their urges. Unlike Europe, where people can go naked. Here, men are very, I don't know why, I don't know why it's like that. But I remember as a young girl, you couldn't walk in the beach. There's always somebody bothering you as if it's a compliment. It's not a compliment when you bother me. No, it's not a compliment when you look at me as, as an object. It's not a compliment at all. And I, it still happens to me because I still belong to some sick category of elderly women. And you know what? It's not a compliment. And in Europe, it's never, it's never going to happen. European men do not behave like that. Why European men do not lust after women and don't expect women to cover themselves? Why? Ask yourself that question as well. And why am I talking with complaints when it's so beautiful? Okay, the lifeguard is screaming. The lifeguards really go over the top here. I don't know why he's screaming, but all I can say is that I've seen people put little kids and not even watch them, and it's a miracle they don't drown. So this is the dog beach down below. My dogs hate the beach. And this is the religious beach where I'm going to go because they don't steal phones, I hope, because they don't like smartphones. He's always screaming. He doesn't understand that. He's screaming at them to come out of the water. And they don't seem to reply. They don't seem to respond. 
Jews are very stubborn people. We don't respond easily to screaming. I don't know why. Why is it? I don't know. Maybe Orthodox do respond, but only to rabbis, not to lifeguards. Huh. So I'm going to do some yoga. I'm surprised the beach is not full because during this closure, starting tomorrow at 2 o'clock, you're not going to be able to go into the water. Why? No logic. You can go to the beach, but you can't go in the water. Why? God only knows. The bacteria is not in the... There's no logic at all. No logic at all for this closure. Nothing. Okay, 5,000 people have been... Um, what is the word? Shoot. Five, oh, 25 minutes for me. You, you must be a saint if you're still listening. So there's about 5,000 cases that have been uh, diagnosed of coronavirus in Israel. Not all of them die. An epidemic for me is that if 5,000 people had died, but not 5,000 people don't die. And of course you don't want to be the statistic that dies or gets corona. But having said that, the hysteria, shutting down businesses, causing people financial um, difficulties, including me, because I'm not making money. Today, I didn't make money. I'm not going to be making money the whole month. So happy holidays to me with no money coming in. And nobody cares. There are very wealthy people here that own five apartments, entire buildings. This is capitalism at its worst. This is not a country where people get help if you have a financial problem. But you do have beautiful, beautiful views. I read statistics that Israel is now 9,000, 200,000, uh, 9 million, sorry, 200,000 people live in Israel. Um, I don't know how many Jews or Arabs, but a lot of people. And we have a very, uh, we have like 200,000 people have come to Israel this year, something like that, could it be? Amazing. People actually want to live here. They leave sometimes very beautiful countries like Canada or US or Europe and they come to live here. They actually make their home in this very difficult country and very frustrating country with a crazy government and a prime minister that makes crazy deals. Ah, last but not least, Netanyahu deal. So this is my two cents worth. When you make peace, you don't sell weapons to corrupt regimes in the Middle East. That's not making peace. Making peace is not selling weapons to start a new war. Donald Trump and Netanyahu are making a lot of money from this deal. That's not peace. It's called selling security in exchange for what? For money. So with all due respect, the United Emirates and the other country, Bahrain, are not the nicest regimes. And Donald Trump has been meddling in the Middle East with his Jewish son-in-law. Being a Jew doesn't mean you understand about the Middle East. That I don't know if I'm revealing a secret. And the way the Middle East goes is there are a lot of clans. And when you give weapons to one side, a lot of weapons, you're actually begging for a war. And it's only a matter of time before there's going to be a huge war. And calling war peace is like George Orwell's famous quote, peace is war and love. Like everything is completely absurd and 180 degrees. This is not a peace treaty, it's a war treaty, encouraging regimes to have weapons so they can start a war against other regimes. And I don't care if it's Iran and Iran is very bad and blah, blah, blah. When you sell weapons, when you encourage people, they call it, we're protecting ourselves, we're protecting ourselves. But the facial expression of Netanyahu signing this peace deal, and there's a, a man who, who was badly injured by rockets from Gaza because the Palestinians are pissed off. Um, first of all, I don't justify violence of Palestinians in any case, but we're not looking out for our security needs. We're not looking out for our security needs in this in this agreement. So I'm I'm not talking politics. I'm just saying a fact. Um, we don't have peace with the Palestinians, and I don't know what it will take to have peace with them. I really don't. I don't know if it's possible. I just know that it's a small country, 
and it's really difficult to have a home. I, I read that there by the year 2024, there's going to be like 12 million people here, and then they expect 25 million people in 20 or 30 years. And where are they going to put all these people? And what about the Palestinians? Where, where, are, they go where are they going to go? Germany? I don't know, maybe. Maybe Europe is the solution. I don't know. Maybe the Israelis can go to Europe too. I don't know, maybe we can all go to Europe and make this a vacation place. I don't know what they're going to do here. But 25 million people on a tiny, tiny strip of land? I don't know how that's going to work out. It's already overcrowded as it is. We already look like Cairo with the motorcycles on the sidewalks. Tel Aviv looks a lot like Cairo. Motorcycles driving on the sidewalks and really loud cars and no place to park for them. And just overcrowded and thank God we have the ocean and thank God not everybody went to the beach today so I can actually enjoy peace today at the beach. So a lot of people are cooking now meals. I never understood the idea of cooking meals. You know, I used to do that. I don't know, it was like being a sheep. I used to think that, oh, I need to cook Sabbath meal, I need to cook holiday meals for my kids. And you know what? Do you think they appreciated it? I don't know, I don't think so. They didn't like my food. And they probably would have preferred McDonald's and less stress. Because when you cook, you get stressed out. At least I do. So now that I have the choice to do whatever I want, I'm going to clean, I'm going to maybe cook something because I need to eat healthy, but I'm not going to call it holiday cooking. And since I don't really have family here to invite, um, I don't really have to cook a holiday meal. I think it's a good idea to just do a picnic, to just sit and have a picnic with these people. And just enjoy the sunset, enjoy nature. That's the message of this closure. So three weeks. Businesses, some businesses are shut down, the education system. I still don't get how people get sick in the education system. I really don't. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. What makes school children more contagious? I don't know. So far, I don't think I have corona. I don't have symptoms. And I've worked in the school system for a while, from kindergarten, special needs kids, elementary school recently, again kindergarten. I don't know, I'm a, over 50. I'm a statistics of one, but still, I didn't see people drive.